study. Uh, here's the algebra 2 lecture for 923 and 924. It's OAS standard A2 and 1-2. In this case, the student will find the absolute value of complex and pure imaginary numbers. Okay? The absolute value of a complex number is found by this. If you have it in standard complex form and you want to take the absolute value of it, you just take the square root of it. You take these two numbers, whatever they are, they're going to be numbers. You square them, add them together, and then take the square root of that, and you'll be looking at the absolute value of that complex number. Okay, so let's put this into practice and see what it looks like. Find the absolute value of each complex number. Well, let's look at the formula once again. I'm going to take a squared plus b squared. It sounds like the Pythagorean theorem, sort of. And then I'm going to take the square root of that. In fact, it is a derivative of the, of the Pythagorean theorem, as we'll learn later. Um, a, b, I'm going to take a squared plus b squared. And I'm going to take the square root of that, and that's going to give me the absolute value of this complex number. So this will be the square root of 4 times 4 is 16, 8 times 8 is 64, and that's the square root of 80. And if you do the square root of 80 with your uh, TI 30xs, it will tell you 4 radical 5, and here's what it's doing. It's going to say, well, there's a perfect square in here. That's 16 times 5. 16 times 5 is 80, and they'll take the square root of 16, they'll say, hey, that'll come out. The square root of 16 is 4, leaving radical 5 under the denominator. Your calculator will do that for you. If you have if you have a uh, TI 30XS, it will take it from here to here. I'm pretty sure. Let me make sure that's correct. Uh, we'll find the square root of 80. Yeah, it says 4 radical 5. So yeah, if you if you don't have that type of a calculator, I'll show you how to do that right. Well, I'll show you right now. Here's what I would do. If I didn't have any idea what the square root of 80 was, and I was looking for perfect squares, I would use my factor tree, 2 times 40. I always start with the smallest prime number that will go in and stick with that until it won't go in any further, then go up to the next prime number. And do that until all of your numbers are prime. And if you start with the smallest and work your way up, all of your prime numbers will look like a hockey stick. Uh, it won't be scattered all over the place. 2 goes into 40 20 times, 2 goes into 20 uh, 10 times, 2 goes into 10 5 times, and we go, well, here's this perfect square right here, and here's a perfect square right here. And there's a rule in mathematics that if you multiply two perfect squares together, you get a perfect square. So this is 4, a perfect square, that's 4, that's a perfect square. 4 times 4 is 16, so I can think of 80 as 16 times 5. And I would want to do that if I was taking the square root of it, because the square root of 16 times 5 is the square root of 16 times the square root of 5, and I know that the square root of 16 is 4. Okay? And that's what your calculator is doing when you put in the square root of 80 and it goes, boom, 4 radical 5. It's doing some sort of algorithm that pulls the perfect square out from under the radical leaving the part that isn't a perfect square under the radical. Okay. Hopefully you have a TI-30. If you don't, you can come down to the school and get one. I've got a, a box of them. I've got like 50 of them sitting right over there. So if you want one, let me know. I'll get you one. Let's take a look at this. We're going to find the absolute value of this complex number. And remember, it's just the square root of a squared plus b squared. Square root of a squared, negative 2 squared is positive 4, plus b squared. Yeah, it's a weird looking 3. So 
this will give me the square root of 4 plus 9. That's the square root of 13, and in this case, there are no perfect squares into there. If you want to use the factor tree, the f you, you quickly find by a little bit of analysis that 13 is prime. There are no perfect squares in there, so I would just leave it like that. The absolute value of negative 2 plus 3i is radical 13. And we'll be applying what that means later on. We've got to find, we're going to know how to find the absolute value, and that's how you do it. Square these two, add them together, take the square root. Let's do these two. We're going to find the absolute value of this complex number. I'm going to say, well, that's the square root of negative 8 squared. Make sure you put it in parentheses so the negative gets squared. If you're using a calculator and trying to square negative 8, and you don't put it in parentheses, your calculator is going to tell you negative 64, and that's wrong. You must put a negative number in parentheses to square it with a, if you're using a calculator. In your head, you'll get negative 8 times negative 8. You say, hey, that's positive 64. But if you use your calculator and you go like this, it will tell you negative 64 because it'll follow the order of operations. It'll say exponents first, 64, and then multiply by this implied negative 1, and it'll tell you negative 64. If you want to square negative 8, you must put it in parentheses if you're using a calculator. Okay. So here we go. Uh, I'm going to square this one. And I'm going to add this one squared. Okay. So what I did was just follow this little formula. The square root of a complex number is this one squared plus this one squared. And now I've just got to do some arithmetic and try not to mess it up. So here we go. This is going to be the square root. This is 64, eight, negative 8 times negative 8 is 64, plus this is 81 i squared, oh I'm sorry, I put my i in there, I'm not supposed to put the i in there. It's back here, if you look up here, it doesn't have the i, it's just a and b. It didn't bring the i in there, I did that when I wasn't thinking and I apologize. So here we go, this is 64 plus 81. And we add those together and we got, what is that, 145? And I'm going to check that with my calculator. Uh, 64 plus 81, just to make sure I haven't messed up my arithmetic, because I do from time to time. Yay, 145. I'm going to take the square root of 145 with this and see what I get. Uh, square root of 145, enter. It tells me the square root of 145. So there we are. If you were trying to see if it had, if you didn't have one of these and you were going to check to see if there is a perfect square in there, you could use the factor tree. Uh, 5 plus 1 is 6 plus 4 is 10. So the smallest prime number that will go into this is a 5. I just checked for 3's. These don't add up to 3, so 3 won't go in there. And a 2 won't because it's not even. So 5 will go into it and it will go in 29 times, I believe. Let me make sure that's right. 29 times 5. Oops. 29 times 5 equals. Yeah. And 29 is prime. So these two are prime. Neither one of them is a perfect square. So there is no perfect square that will come out from under the radical like it did up here. 16, square root of 16 comes out as a 4. That won't happen here. And that's why your calculator just said the square root of 145. There was no perfect square factor to pull out from under the radical. Okay. So again, we're going to find the absolute value of this. We're going to take the square root of negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. This is the square root of 9, negative 3 times negative 3, plus 16. That's the square root of 25. And we know the square root of 25. We learned that when we were little. Square root of 25 is 5. So we found the absolute value of this complex number to be 5. Absolute value of this complex number was the square root of 145. It's a little bit bigger than 12, because the square root of 144 is 12. Okay. And the last two. I'm thinking of this. So if I was going to find the absolute value of this, I would just say, well, that's 0 squared 
plus 3 squared. Well, that's 0 plus, nine, plus 3 squared is 9, and the square root of 9 is 3. You don't have to do this, but you can think of it that way. Let's take a look at this one. This would be 0 minus 5i. If I take the square root, 0 squared is 0, plus negative 5 squared, don't forget to put it in parentheses, and that will give me 0 plus 25 is 25, square root of 25 is 5. And you don't have to put those zeros in there, but some, some folks like to write that as a complex number, and so that way they can use the formula A plus B I. So there we go. We found the absolute value of 3i is 3. The absolute value of negative 5i is 5. It's easy when they're zeros. And we found all of these absolute values using the definition of the absolute value. That, that absolute value of a plus bi is the square root of a squared plus b squared. I hope that made sense. <laughs>